That's right, it's your man Poo Nanners broadcasting to you live from the studio. I'm your Texas caster and hype master. And I'm your West Coast caster and game master, Sleepy. That's right, Sleepy bringing us the jams. Casting all the good Onward games is going to let us know how the Season 6 Open Qualifier went, the first step into the Winter Championships. Yeah, boy, this last weekend was really packed with a lot of action. In two days, I think it was something like 20-odd teams battling it out, ranks 8 and below, going at it for their opportunity to qualify for the main championship, the qualifying bracket for the group stages. They're qualifying uh, to qualify. I like they're that. They're qualifying to qualify, <laughs> to do the dance. It's not too champ. much different than what y'all did to get into OC5, where you had the guys who were not ranked high enough, they could kind of fight it out. Now, this one's a, a bit more expressive. You have a lot more people that are duking it out. But for the most part, fairly open. It's like, hey, you didn't do as, do as good this year, but you your last chance to get in. I didn't like it where, uh, I think ESL would call them last chance qualifiers. So then they, started yeah. call, then they started calling them open qualifiers. But I was like, I like last chance. It, Makes it sound a little more, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, well, there's more on the line, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, but yeah, the uh, open qualifier format was basically the first team, four rounds or four points. Uh, they only played best of one map for each of the five rounds of, this, of the championship series. Uh, and they were preset maps in a specific order. So for map one, all teams had to play downfall. Map two, it was bizarre. Map three was cargo. Then you had quarantine and suburbia. Uh, so all the maps, and then you'd find out your rankings through the challenge board that was running. Uh, the ranks were taken into consideration for each matchups and how each team was doing uh, within the bracket. So it was a lot of really good action. Uh, I was not casting the first day. I think Nightfire did all the casting, and he bounced between uh, the lobbies. But, um, yeah, so it was, it was a lot of action-packed stuff going on in day one. Uh, for Group A. Oh, yeah, man. And I caught some of the highlights, which we're going to cover here. It was very exciting and fun. He had a couple of shakeups, not too much. Mostly went the way that we expected it to, but we are not going to spoil it for you just yet. We're going to go through the clips and help you get there at the same time everyone else who watched it live get. For those of you who already know, uh, then you know where we're going. Uh, good thing there's no live chat for them to spoil it for everyone else. <laughs> so in Group A, it started off with Sinister Pride, who was ranked 33 up against Rome. Uh, these are names that I do not know. I uh, heard it was a very tight match, though, between these two low-ranked teams. And uh, this, this clip, I think, really sums up the sort of uh, magical moments we were going to experience for the rest of the night. Set it up. Yeah, uh, so here we are. Sinister Pride is on the objective. They've got five of their men up to one of Rome's men. All of a oh, sudden... Oh, grenade. Now it's C4, <laughs> that's right. It was, yeah, it was some, a piece of C4 takes out the two members who are underneath capping. Uh, and this one member of Rome is making a fantastic final stand. He makes a rush back for Gotta the objective rotate. building. Yeah, he, makes a ro he rotates back to cover that angle and mm. uh, ends up trading... Uh, and unfortunately losing that round, but he put up a heck of an effort against five enemies who were swarming the objective. So that was a little bit of some of the action we saw kind of starting the day out. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was really good. He did that C4 to take out two guys. It's just 5v1, man versus the world, and he certainly was going to try. And he knew he had to rotate, and it was funny. He hesitated on that rotation. You see, he was taking it ginger and slowly, like you should, yeah. Um, however, if he had not taken, if he just blew into that room, he'd have been fine. He probably wouldn't have got caught with his pants down like he did. And, I mean, not totally with his pants down. He did fire back. He did get the trade, but that's better than giving up two points, right? Yeah. Um, I think that I'm surprised the Marsoc member who killed him at the end didn't see him faster. Uh, cause from the clip, it looked like it took that Marsoc member from Sinister Pride a while to take the shot. But, uh, y y you know, it's always easy to say from up top anyways. Well, yeah, I mean, it's ranked 33 versus 17. I know that, you know, it probably doesn't mean anything if they're just getting started out. I don't know a lot about Sinister Pride, but further down, I don't know what to expect from those teams, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're both pretty new teams. Center Surprise actually been around for a while, but there's only a couple members of their original roster left. There's been a lot of roster changes over the season, so I don't think they've ever really found their groove, but uh, they put up a good fight, and we got to see some great action for the first match of the day. Do their team members rotate, the ones that they've lost, do they rotate up into better teams, or do they just disappear? <laughs> Uh, some, you know, some just can't commit anymore to the hours that some teams li would like to commit to onward and the playing. But, uh, you know, some teams, of course, do try and swap out and go for better teams or they just go to reservists because they want to play competitively, but they don't want to be 
on a team necessarily. Uh, speaking of reservists, <laughs> you're <laughs> nice setting us up there. Ronin, a ranked 19 team, went up against They Took Our Jobs, a brand new team. Uh, and then we had a bit of controversy. Apparently, They Took Our Jobs popped up as a completely new team, as I said, with new members about a week before the open qualifier started. And then they had a heated exchange, some mean words were used, and then it was revealed that Took Our Jobs was just a bunch of Smurfs. They were all reservists from other teams that got bored of being reservists and decided they were going to form their own team and try to get into the championship. So that was pretty, uh, I, it was pretty fun. I love, I love a, what's the word, a surprise like that. I think they wanted to hold on to the surprise, but they realized they just couldn't keep it to themselves and had to let people know who they were. Um, oh. Yeah, there were a lot of Discord detectives going around <laughs> trying to figure out who they were. A lot of people, there was a lot of speculation. So, yeah, it, it, it definitely caused quite a stir in the competitive community. Uh, a lot of people were wondering who they were because they came in, they started talking a lot of smack uh, yeah. under these new <laughs> pseudonyms. And yeah, turns yeah. out, you know, it was a bunch of reservists who were highly high skilled players, but mm -hmm. just unable to commit to a team. Uh, so they're playing reservist pool. Uh, they decided to put together a team at the last minute to compete in the open qualifiers and to see if they could do anything. They got that South Park oh. reference. Dirk and Dirk. Yeah. Good stuff. And, uh, and they ended up taking down Ronan. Three to four, though. Really, really close on the point spread there in that first round. We don't have any clips from that, unfortunately. Uh, no. if, and I think the reason we don't have any clips is because Buxton couldn't find any good uh, sweet air grenade burst. So that's generally <laughs> what he likes to throw our way. But yeah. a game we do have clips from was the Legionnaires versus Phantoms. Legionnaires, a, a crowd favorite. People love to watch them play. I know I do. Phantoms, uh, a fairly new team, I'm assuming, because they're just like right above in rank over they took our jobs. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, Phantoms, yeah, another brand new team. Uh, they came together from two pre previously competing Spanish teams, uh, Spanish Bull Union, which is now Spanish Union, uh, and then another team. So I forget the exact name of that team. But yeah, this was another good match, actually. Phantoms played really, really well. And you'll see in some of these clips that we have that uh, that game not quite as easy as uh, Legionnaires thought it might be. Yeah, uh, apparently, according to Bucks' notes here, not only were the matches really close, but Legionnaires uh, could have lost if they had slipped up just one more time, like uh, they was just super close uh, going up against the all Spanish team. And I like this, you know, we have the French onward union really making a stir. We have a lot of the, uh, the German uh, slash British teams that are pretty fancy, but now seeing these Spanish teams come in, I can't wait to see more of these like country based teams coming in and turn this into like a fun international sport. When are we going to have the yeah. Canadian teams, right? Oh uh, yeah, well, there's actually, believe it or not, in the uh, in the U.S. side has a lot of Canadian teams, so it should be reclassed as North America because we do <laughs> include a lot of. There's a lot of Canadians on different teams. Uh, Global Chem, Danglers, uh, it is, SMC, it is they all have Canadian North America, players. I'm pretty sure. Team. No, I, I I think it is I think it is worded as U.S. East and West, but it's America's not, it's America's plural, yeah. It's, uh, uh, okay. I'm getting that confused well, with ESL. Enough. ESL likes to do the, um, uh, the NA, North America. Yeah. I feel it's not applicable. But in either case, <laughs> uh, let's get into these clips, man, that, uh, that you were so ready to set up. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so here we are. This is round two. A nice grenade attempt comes out from Legionnaires. They're attacking here on the, the northeastern objective, the east courtyard objective. Um, and here soon we're going to see, yes, the member of Phantoms here is going to chuck a grenade out and it's going to nail one guy and then also a team kill going to come out from Raider against El Vegas. Oops. Uh, so two for one deal there as the clutch comes out and just, Phantoms just pick up their barely. first round there. And then here's this, uh, this sad, sad mistake. <laughs> Yeah, and here's Legionnaires. They're right on the verge of taking this very last point that they need on Marsoc. He's got five seconds left. Eric runs in. He's chasing down the last remaining member of, Sp of Spanish Union. Tries to knife him. <laughs> and unfortunately, he does not make it before the timer runs out. So Phantoms end up winning the round, and that goes to 3-3. And um, yeah, like you heard, 
Eric not very happy with what <laughs> happened, but I think he was completely out of ammo. I think he was out in his Had primary. I believe Had he drew his secondary and didn't have anything, or maybe it wasn't a uh, you know loaded properly, what have you. Uh, so he went Had for the knife, be. but and he got greedy. And there's nothing worse than in that clutch moment that you know you've clutched it, you know? He's just like, oh, I'm chasing this guy down. I'm going to shoot him down. The guy knows you're running ammo, so he's running for it. You got the knife. He's like, I'm going to be, I'm going to kill these people with my bare teeth and take this round for my team. Timer's up. Yeah, he went oh. literally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I could feel it from here, brother. But Legionnaires in the end pulled out the win. They got four to three when it all came said and done uh, for round two. So that's not good. Which meant yeah. that they had to go up against they took our jobs next. Um, now, Legionnaires, uh, apparently, the harsh words that were exchanged with their took our jobs was with, was with Legionnaires, and they were not too happy about it, so they were keen to take out they took our jobs. And it was a pretty brutal, brutal but a dicey on occasion for the uh, Legionnaires. In the end, it was still, in my opinion, uh, fairly one-sided points-wise. They say the points don't really communicate what was going on in the match, but we'll let this one clip let you guys decide. Yeah, so here we have Legionnaires, Kitten Mittens, the new team captain. Uh, he is trying to bring back a clutch around here. He's 1v3 against the Tooker Jobs. And uh, he's going to find some nice kills here in a sequence as he gets a beautiful clutch for his team. Here we go. He grabs one mm. in the middle. He's going to quickly rotate out of there, which is great. you got to shoot and move when you're by yourself, especially mm -hmm. with multiple targets. They know where you He's are. He's going to come around here. I think he spots one of the members Ooh. of Tucker Jobs. He's going to follow him around. Oh, he catches him out in the open. Is he going to catch him here? No. It's a damn and predator. And he goes for the double tap, of course. And he knows the other guy has to, be on the up, has to be up, right? Yeah, well, I'm not sure if he knows his kill count or not here, but he does see the last guy. He Dang. gets a nice shot. God, that would have he... been like two pixels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably wasn't very much, but he does end up clutching that round and bringing them back and able to secure Legionnaires that second round win on Marsak. Yeah, yeah. So they end up going four to one and uh, doing pretty well. I mean, it's what we expected from Legionnaires. They're a good team. They're ranked 12, as we had already said. Uh, they took our jobs, brand new team. Uh, they also immediately disbanded after Group A ended. Uh, they just got together just to see if they could get a shot at the uh, championship. And we have some more information about them and different teams that they ended up split up and going down to. But they had their fun. And uh, we had fun watching them have their fun, I think. <laughs> yeah, end, we did. End of the day, as you saw with the end of round three, that put Legionnaires with an undefeated win in Group A. Uh, which, if you want to take a look at how that worked out, uh, we'll get to that later. Wait, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that later. I don't want to click on that just now. We're going we're gonna to jump right into Group B. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, at first game was Animal House versus Amber. Animal House ranked 12, still one of my favorite teams because Steven is just hilarious and the rest of his guys <laughs> know how to have a good time. Uh, yeah. Amber, I believe Amber is also part of the Inferno Brotherhood. Um, yes, they are. <laughs> they're ranked 24, so like twice, twice the rank of uh, Animal House. Mm -hmm. uh, the outcome of this one's pretty much the way that we expected it to be. Uh, Animal House, they're a solid contender, uh, as we expected to take all of Group B. And Amber was an inexperienced team. Uh, they still got a ways to go. So let's take a look at this clip that Buxton got us from this round. Yeah, this is one of our Benny Hill moments we've got here. <laughs> it's going to turn out to be a very unlucky moment for the members of Ember. The members. The, the members, members of Ember. <laughs> the members of Ember in all of December. It's like, let's throw this smoke grenade oh, right. right into the tree. Well, don't throw the other one in the tree. God, no. <laughs> All three of them, those palmed fronds need to work for the Dallas Cowboys because they need some help this season. So <laughs> Dante, get in touch with Dallas. Get those palm trees a contract in the NFL because those trees can catch an uh, ember. All three smokes. It almost support. looks like they really just wanted to smoke up the trees. Like, we're not going to win this one. So we're just going to do our praise be the fire god and put the smoke in the trees. Now, they assured me they're not part of a fire-worshipping cult, but I still have my doubts. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it's pretty unprofessional to smoke trees in the middle of a league match, but oh, yeah. that, I'll that, leave that, that up sense. for the... <laughs> I, mean, that, that, I, I, can, I don't know, man. I think, um, I think the sickness might disagree with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a few players who would, but I it's... Will, you know, your personal well, preference. It yeah, is really I always said edibles and VR go really well together. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Blaze uh, and the following round, Blaze went up against Mob Squad. Mob Squad, who was ranked 13. So just a um, 
That's where uh, Blaze is ranked eight, so they just barely didn't make that cut for the championships. But Blaze is one of the ones favored, as we said, to take uh, this one. Animal House also um, were a solid contender, but everyone, I think, thought Blaze was going to take it with their higher rank and, and their uh, constant sacrifices to their fire deity. So we don't have any clips from that one, but Blaze was able to take it over Mob Squad 4-2. Um, they said that it didn't disappoint, but it's another one where Buxton let us know that the point spread doesn't really communicate how close it was. And it's like, well, what about them clips, bro? And it's like, you just, you just have to catch some clips later for Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for Blaze and Phoenix. Now, Phoenix, if I remember correctly, is not part of Inferno uh, Brotherhood, but I said you should include them. That's another fire theme, right? Phoenix, who's ranked four, went up against the Tactical Illuminati, who's ranked 21. Uh, great name, the Tactical Illuminati, in all caps, the way it was meant to be spelt. Uh, it was a, apparently very close for a Tactical Illuminati, uh, especially considering that they're very unknown and experienced. They had some uh, pretty lucky plays with uh, sprays through smokes, managing to hit people on the other side, which obviously would make a high-ranked team upset. But uh, according to Buxton, Phoenix was able to have similar luck to kind of balance it out in the end. So, you know, luck shots only make you mad if you don't get luck shots during the course of the match yourself, I think. Yeah. All right, well, let's check out these clips. All right, so in the first one here, we're on cargo, and Rushers is going to get a great set, a double kill through some smoke, completely blind in round number one for uh, Phoenix. I'm sorry. Uh, and then he's going to pick up another one, getting three right off the bat in the start of the round. And just amazing. I mean, just pre-firing there got him those two <laughs> kills. The second one, it's going to work out the... The same way for Tactical Illuminati, I believe. Yeah, here we go. Can't read that name. But Tactical Illuminati will be able to get some blind fire kills as well. So kind of a little bit of a trade with that lucky, uh, those lucky kills. You got to love the lucky, the lucky sprays, man. Lucky nads are good too, but when you watch uh, Arsenic do it, you know that can't be luck. Yeah. Or he yeah, sacrificed his own kittens. Nice nade right here. Does it set off? Oh, he's throwing smokes. They're just smoke. covering. Yeah. <laughs> now that, that was air. Yeah, nice air burst grenade catches Squick Gookin. Well, let's Could move on to the next clip. I don't think there's a lot going on here. Let's check out this double nade that's supposed to happen. Here we go. We got a two-man nade come in, or a two-nade assault come in. Only grabs one unfortunately and then that is trading back and revived. forth yep just back and forth i love the nade meta game that has evolved over the course of this game oh it's been ridiculous it's i it, i kind of wonder is he i need you here there is the double nade this is gonna happen boom it gets one but not the oh, second i just got one, the same guy twice it's the second time he gets <laughs> down by nades I'm not entirely sure what Buxton was expecting us to see here. <laughs> nope. It was exciting, <laughs> I think. There maybe. were nades and killed people. So yeah, yeah. Well, it'd be hilarious wanted. if I actually ended up just pulling the entirely wrong clip. But, I mean, it was cargo, right? They ended up yeah. ending at uh, four to And some nades happen. In the uh, favor of Phoenix. So, Tactical Illuminati got real close to taking out Phoenix, but then in the end, they, they ended up pulling it out. So, that was not, not so bad. Uh, not to be outdone, though. Animal House, rank 12, had to go up against Stone Cold Killers. Rank 15, so you know that's going to be a solid matchup. As close as the last time these two teams met in standard Season 6 play. But this time, it went the way of uh, Animal House. So let's take a look at this next clip we've got. Yeah, so here we are, quarantine. Steven rushing in on a Marsoc round. Oh, Going oh. in for the kill, but he loses tracking. And Dr. Sean going to be able to pick up the kill and end Steven's attempt at capping. Meanwhile, Box Toy is going to come in and pick up one. I believe he also gets another one, if not two, here. Yeah, Steve angered RN Jesus, and uh, it came back to bite him with that loss of tracking. Oh, that's always unfortunate in VR when it happens. But it's new tech. Stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much all that ends up happening. Yeah. There it is. Stone Cold Killers taking it from Animal House. But it doesn't matter. It ended up going to Animal House, four to three. Very, very close, down to the wire, match point as it were. 
but four to three is how they ended that one to Animal House, which sends us to the, uh, to the same round, but different teams. Blaze, rank eight versus Phoenix, rank nine. Now, this is going to be a fire of a match, right? Is that what this is? This is the explosion. Yeah, that was the fire growing. <laughs> Uh, this is how Blaze is going to consume Phoenix and pull them into the Inferno Brotherhood. Uh, Blaze being the slight favorite of Group B. Uh, so seeing them lose 2-4 to four against Phoenix was, uh, was fairly entertaining. Uh, no one would have expected that to happen, but it did. Oh. And we're going to see a couple of clips of how that happened. Yeah, so, okay, we've got Phoenix here. They're pushing up to the center burning building objective. So Oops. here comes the smoke out from them. Well, you know what? They said, here, <laughs> take that smoke and you can have it back. Thank you very much. And and then uh, I was just honestly, this was a uh, Nightfire and I casting this one, and I just I, I really expected this to just keep going back and forth between them like a ping pong match. A la uh, uh, Lonely Viper. Uh, yeah, a la Lonely Viper style. Um, but yeah, a great <laughs> a great play from them. Uh, some funny moments we get here on the Onward Match League, and then we get this awesome. Triple kill with C4. You're going to see Cryosa, he takes down Prefontaine accidentally. Then he reses him. They're coming in for the push, and then the C4 blows. And he gets three, and Phoenix grabbed their win here on the uh, gas station objective. So a pretty, pretty sweet little kill, kill set there. <laughs> C4 is coming into the meta. I'm seeing him more and more, and I'm liking it. If only I we could get more drones and hacking into the game. Yeah, um, the drones are still being used. Uh, I saw some drone usage, I believe, in Group B. I can't remember who it was. And then I actually saw some people do it last night in the scrim in a comp lobby. So the drones are still being used. The hacking, not so much. Um, I'm not really too sure as to why that is. Maybe we need to put out a poll well, for next week's episode. A, the taser is more of a dunk move. If you can tase them, you can knife them. And those are rare consequences in game. Yeah, the taser is... I don't know. I, I'm not a fan a of I'm like, <laughs> I think I think you should just use the point on a pistol, throw a laser sight on it, and have the extra weapon because the taser has one round. So I feel like it's just such a waste. And if your shield guy doesn't hit that one shot, he's got to then go for the knife before he has any other weapon. So yep, that's yep, my yep. opinion on the taser. But a lot of taser usage is still being done. <laughs> well, for whatever reason, even though they lost that match, Blaze went on to go up against Stone Cold Killer. So Blaze. Uh, being uh, rank 8, go up against Stone Cold Killers, rank 15. So it pretty much goes the way you would have predicted, but uh, Bucks did let us know it was a, uh, a fun fight uh, with at least some love coming in from Blaze. Not going too hard. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, no. Uh, again, Nightfire and I casting this one. They're playing Suburbia. A Miracle Dev in a position I said was not going to work unless, <laughs> or he would not get more than one kill, I'm sorry, before being refragged. And then he goes and gets a triple kill right after that. And then I asked Nightfire, I said, is it just me or does anybody else want to do anything opposite of what I said is going to happen? And I was wondering yeah, if you were going to ask her, are they listening to me? I think they were listening to me. <laughs> it's those moments where you do feel like, people could be listening to you but you know they can't because we do run a delay on our streams in order to keep that kind of stuff from happening obviously so um but yeah it was a it was a great play in a position that shouldn't have worked as well as it did a miracle that made it work out pretty well yep so this ended up sending a uh, phoenix rank number nine up against mm. animal house rank 12 now this was a hell of a matchup according to buxton the scores don't represent the closest of the match as is always and, uh, but we've got ourselves a couple of clips from that match, so let's take a look. Yeah, so here in the first one, we're going to see Box Toys. He stops a cap uh, just about two minutes into the match. He's going to grab another. Then he's got one on lane four. He's coming up. He sees Mano. He's going to tag Mano as well. That's a triple there within the first two minutes of the round for Animal House. He's doing great at defending this objective. And he's got only one member, I believe. No, two members of Phoenix still still up. <clears throat> he dances around for a little bit. Uh, obviously, a little downtime between engagements sometimes. But here, any moment now, we'll be seeing a pretty perfectly cooked grenade come in. Oh, and here no. it is now. Uh, and a <laughs> did a front flip on that oh, one. A little endo. <laughs> Yeah, a little endo flippo for old box toys as he is taken out. 
And here in the second clip, we have Will of the Wisp. This is the what ends up being the last round. Will of the Wisp going in for a cap on the tank objective. Uh, Animal House have a lot of smokes out in the center. He gets Ooh. taken down by Malcriado. Malcriado comes in to make sure that the tank is defended because, as you can see, that's a pretty, pretty bad problem to have. Green Theft Auto knowing that Will of the Wisp was taken down. He runs in, he drops his tablet, goes back, grabs it, and then moves in. More smokes have come out from his teammate. He gets in there. <laughs> The defender who killed the last capper gets taken down, and he is able. Green Theft Auto is able to take the cap and spread that score line five to two, as we can see. But man, it was it was a really great map, as you can see there at the round start. It was it was three to two, so it was a close map uh, up until that cap. Uh, just one of those things where you time it just right, and you can get that five points instead of four, and help yourself out a little bit. Animal House pulling off just the last second in order to get themselves some points, which I think is really what squeezed out uh, Phoenix. I think Phoenix or, or Animal House, who was in contention. We're going to take a look at the group outcome. So Animal House uh, was just short, that's right, of beating Blaze. They got a bunch of points in that one. They ended up going two to five because they got that cap there at the end, but it, it wasn't enough in order to give them the tiebreaker win over Blaze. And if there's people that were going to fight it out for the end, it was definitely going to be Animal House and Blaze. Not to be all done, though, you can see Phoenix and Mob Squad also pull out the same win-loss ratio, but that, uh, that tiebreaker is what ends up getting you. We don't see those points right here, but it is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a number of match wins against tied opponents. So uh, opponents with the same win-loss as Blaze as the ones that they're going to go up against at the end and then have to break that tiebreaker. So, um, Congratulations, Blaze, and yeah, all the are, fire and glory. And, That's right, um, and yeah, they will go next uh, this weekend. They will play against Legionnaires to see who gets the one available slot in the Group B uh, kind of quarterfinal. Yeah, and you know, as we saw, as we talked about earlier, Group A uh, was a much smaller group, and Legionnaires just undefeated that entire one. So yeah, they uh, did a good job. Nothing too unexpected there. So as, as uh, Sleepy just alluded to, the championships are continuing, and those technically start on the 8th. We're just trying to suss out who our next uh, open qualifier, last chance qualifier is that's going to get into it. As you remember, the prize pool is going to be a customized Pro 2 VR, VRML t-shirt, and some accessories from VR cover. Uh, Challenger Cup winners are getting their own stuff, though. They're getting Steam Oculus gift cards, Golden Ticket to Championship Round Robin B stage which you just alluded to yourself. So we get the Challenger right. Cup A and B, uh, B, and they go to Challenger Cup Final. Now, this one says any, uh, December 3rd to 8th, so it's basically anywhere in between there. I think if I remember correctly, you told me that will be on Saturday? Yeah, uh, it's going to be Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and add 5 to the Eastern Standard Time for UK <laughs> time. <laughs> just just, just put, it in, put it in Google. It'll tell you. So there yes, and go. then after that is when the actual championships start. We'll get our round robin, round robin matches for A and B on the 8th and 9th. So that'll be very shortly afterwards. Uh, the, then the semis and the finals on the following weekend. And that will end our winter championship. So we'll end up having fun there. So you can see, uh, we already just talked about this. This is the qualifier A and B and the map order. Then the Challenger Cup final and the rules for that. Best of three maps. So just uh, pretty, what's the word? Uh, Typical, normal, tournament, competitive style match for the Challenger mm -hmm. Cup final between the Legionnaires and yep. Blaze. Who is your call on Legionnaire versus Blaze? I'm going to call Blaze. Um, I think Legionnaires are going to put up a definitely good fight. They have improved a lot. They did a great job in Group A, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my money on Blaze. I'm going to keep my money on my boys. Blaze, they've done a great job, and I like to see that they've been succeeding because they have been putting in a lot of work, and they've got a lot of skill on their roster. Yeah, yeah, they've really been dialing up, especially with their entire group that they've built in order to help them scrim against each other and really tighten up their skills. Uh, granted, I mean, they're still lower on the rung. They're working their way up. They've been most improved, I think, throughout the season. But it's going to be a while before they can break that top six of the top five guys world, uh, worldwide. There's a very elite fighting squad up there. Although uh, we do see some people slip from time to time, and you know, there are people play, some of us just get older and just can't play like we used to. Some of the younger That's players right. come out and just end up, you know, surprising us with what they can do. You got people like Arsenic that could somehow like perfectly snipe you with a grenade from across the map. So you know everyone, all the kids are practicing that move now. So uh, a lot can happen. And there's a lot of teams that have open spots. So we'll, uh, we're going to have some fun with that one. Uh, speaking of teams that have open spots, 
I believe that was uh, Pupachu, right? He, um, he's an experienced league player that played for Mob Squad at its peak. And uh, he played in the wild card, open qualifier A, for Took Our Jobs. And he, then he was picked up by uh, SMC Tactical just two days after that. They liked what he did, and uh, they said, hey, come play for us. I'm going to assume yeah. that was the sickness when he was just a uh, little happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. Pupachu is a good guy. I love seeing that name. Any name with Poo in it gets my seal of approval. Uh, <laughs> Silent Purge apparently fell apart as a bit of the, uh, as the co-captain left looking for a new team next season. So that means there's an opening there on Silent Purge. Everybody looking out for that. Uh, Ronan completely shattered after the open qualifier and now only has two members. So they're looking for at least three more people, if not four, if you're looking to get on a team and you're a free agent right now. So that's the good news, right? Going into next season, there are teams looking for new people. We know we have free agents, new people playing this game all the time, getting better, learning from newer players. As uh, No Man said, if you're not losing, you're not learning. And there are people just like him with that mindset that are constantly getting there, going up against tougher players to learn about the game and to get better at it. And so now yeah. is your chance to jump on a team. The, the season has ended for many teams. And those are the teams that you're more likely to get on or to audition for or uh, your tr tr stage tryouts, so to speak, to see if you can get on those and get into the next season. Mm -hmm. And that'll, that'll be something I think worth looking forward to. Uh, here's, here's a little message that we showed you last time, but we'll show it again, why not? Of uh, Blaze showing you what you're in for if you join Infer the Inferno Brotherhood. Now, here in the burning forge of the furious Inferno clan, we melt away noob slag and mold warriors. In the constant heat of battle with our fellow brothers, we continually fan the flames of a true fighter. Altar of our fire, our lord burns in your no, soul. No, 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 not that one, not that one. The other one. Yep. Oh. Every day we grow stronger, and soon the top of the mountain will blaze with the fury of our Inferno Brotherhood. We have superior training tactics, as you can see. All the way down, soldier! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it, damn it! Advanced tactical planning rooms. Oh. Oh, 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 wrong room, wrong room, wrong room. That's a whole different thing. Over here to the planning room. All right, you boys ready? You best be fired up now. Cause I, I, I calm down. I'm trying to tell you something now. You better calm down. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna rush in there. We're gonna throw our smoke grenades and our grenade grenades in there as fast as we can. And then we're gonna run. We're gonna post up there yonder and we're gonna wait for them to come out of their creepy little spots. Now. Don't get caught in the crossfire. Yeah. You no, no, calm down. No, calm down now. Calm down. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna take them down. But don't get too fired up. You know? Okay, calm down. I told you to calm down, man. Calm down. We are ready for next season. This time we mean it. Inferno. It's in the game. No, the other one. Inferno 420 plays it. No, the other one. Inferno, we've got the meats. God damn it. <laughs> Inferno Brotherhood, Blaze, earning their way into the championship, assuming they can take down Legionnaires. Legionnaires will not yep. go down without a fight, though. Legionnaires they won't. won their round undefeated, so they may be more fired up in order to take this round. <laughs> yeah, a little fencing style there from uh, Sleepy. That's how we do it in-game. They need to give us swords, right? Is that the next move? We're going to get Dante to give us swords? <laughs> Just Light slice Just off the enemy of a folk member. In celebration of the success of Beat Saber, we now all play with lightsabers. I would be, I would be okay with, with the knife being able to be thrown. Like they do in, uh, um, what's it called, Pavlov, right? 
yeah, similar to it, maybe, I don't know, something feels... Something more realistic. That. There, there, that one's thrown more like an animated Frisbee, almost. It, it also feels, like, very light. Like, the velocity on it always feels like you can just, like, chuck the heck out of it with a ti- with a, just a tiny little flick. Whereas <laughs> I want one where it feels like you just gotta, like, give it some juice. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like the grenades a little bit, but just a little bit more weight. Right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We have covered everything we can. We will be back once the championships light up a little bit more. This weekend, we have the, uh, cha- the Challenger Championship as well as the initial run of the, champion- the Winter Championship Series. So we will be back with lots more highlights, lots more grenades. Special thanks to Bucks and Water for putting together this entire show. And Chris A. Brown for getting us some graphics as well as sleepy my co-anchor giving me those shout casting that we need on those highlights every day we're looking for more highlights from you guys so make sure you highlight the streams send out those clips put them on discord hit us on twitter and if you have any graphics any of your own videos any of your own recruitment stuff you want send it our way sleepy send us out all right everybody thanks for tuning in uh we'll see you next week on the next episode of the vr respawn onward episode 